As Christians, our standard of living can never be right or wrong, but the cross. The principle of the cross is our principle of conduct. Praise God that he makes his sun to shine on evil and the good. With him, it is a question of grace and not of right and wrong. Washington he goes on to illustrate this point with a story. A brother in South China had a rice field in the middle of a hill. In time of drought, he used a water wheel worked by a treadmill to lift water from the irrigation stream into his field. His neighbor had two fields below his, and one night made a breach in the dividing bank and drained off all his water. When the brother repaired the breach and pumped in more water than the brother repaired the breach afterwards, pumped in more water, his neighbor did the same thing again. And this was repeated three or four times. So he consulted his brother. I've tried to be patient and not to retaliate, he said, but is it right? And this is something the Christians did, which might be a suggestion. After they had prayed <laughs> together about it, one of them replied, if we only try to do what is right, Surely we are very poor Christians. We have to do something more than what is right. The brother was so much impressed. Next morning he pumped water for the two fields below him. And in the afternoon pumped water for his own field. After that the water stayed in his own field. His neighbor, neighbor was so amazed at his action that he began to inquire the reason. In the course of time he too became a Christian. So... As Christians, how do we live in this world with people who do evil? For answers to this question, we are going to look at Daniel 9. This is a prayer uttered by Daniel for his people, the Israelites. I'm going to read it in full, stopping from time to time to make some commentary. Daniel 9, 4. I pray to the Lord my God and confess. O Lord, the great and awesome God, keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem and all of Israel, both near and far, and all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you, O Lord, we and our kings and our princes and our fathers are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiven, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us, though his servant the prophets, through his servants the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written about the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us, because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the word spoken to us and against our rulers by bringing upon us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet we have not sought favor of our Lord, our God, by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring disaster upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed. Did you notice how many times Daniel uses the first verse of plural there? He says we and our and us all the time. Daniel willingly, intentionally, freely, and deliberately accepts the sin of his people as his own. From a human's perspective, Daniel didn't have to do this. When Daniel was probably a teenager when the Israelites were back in the land. And when he was taken to Babylon, he was still a young man. He really wasn't in charge of things. Daniel could have said, those sins that those people did back then. But he chose not to. Daniel was also as a, one of the unique individuals in the Bible where he's not implicated in any known sin. Now, he was fairly simple, yet there's no story of Daniel committing a sin. 
So he could have been like the Pharisee as well, who stood up and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I give. Instead, Daniel, through his prayer, becomes one with his people. Their sin is his sin. Their suffering is his suffering. Their punishment is his punishment. Never once does Daniel exclude himself from the sins of the nation. Never once does he blame the people while claiming to be exempt from their sin problem. Now, often we try to define us in a way that is most beneficial to us. We try to use categories of us and them to limit the guilt we have. We seem to do the opposite of Daniel. When a Catholic priest gets on the news for abusing children, or say a Mormon compound is taken into federal custody for the way they're treating minors, we say stuff like Catholics are not real Christians. Mormonism is just a cult. While those statements may be right and may have some validity to them, we are called to something more than just being right. Instead of trying to remove himself from the guilt, Daniel accepts full responsibility for the sin of his people as American Protestant Christians. Are there sins that we truly need to own? Who are our people? And do we have, as a people, have a collective moral guilt? Is slavery still an issue? Do we owe something to Native Americans, Japanese Americans, Jewish people, Muslims, women, the unborn? Quite often as Christians, we try to separate ourselves from the sins of others. We don't want their stuff to contaminate us. We claim that we had no part in saving slavery. My family wasn't even here at the time. We claim that we had nothing to do with the Crusades. That was so long ago. We claim that abortion is their problem, not ours. We have nothing to do with the standards of the country that create life as so cheap or positions we put women in because men don't stick around. We claim that homosexuality is their issue and it doesn't affect us at all. We are not responsible for it at all where we have created an image of a man that has no feeling. We distance ourselves so that the stink and stench of their guilt doesn't rub off on us. Now, O Lord, our God, going back to Daniel, verse 15, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, who made for yourself a name that endures to this day. We have sinned. We have done wrong. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away from your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill. Our sins and the iniquities of our fathers that made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to those, all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous but because of your great mercy. O oh Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hear and act for your sake. O oh my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. 